A gift I treasure is something given to me many years ago now by my mother. It's an album containing newspaper cuttings, notices of birth, marriages and deaths, letters, other memorabilia, all relating to members of my family, going back over three or four generations. And of course there are photographs, lots of them, most of them in black and white. It's still a delight to take it out of the drawer and look through from time to time, and to notice in a way which is both uncanny and oddly reassuring, that as I grow older, I begin to look more and more like the photographs of those earlier preceding generations of my family who appear in the album. Family likeness, our DNA, I suppose, comes out in the end. All Saints' Day, celebrated every year on the first day of November, is the day when we celebrate our Christian family. The saints are our sisters and brothers in Christ, and we are called to grow to be like them, not by coming to look like them physically, but by following their example, by growing in holiness. The saints are literally the holy ones, that's what the word means. God alone is holy, but God shares his holiness with our human nature through the incarnation of his Son, Jesus Christ, and by means of the action of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And because of the gifts which the Spirit gives, we have it within us to grow in holiness, to grow into the likeness of Christ. When we recite the Apostles' Creed, we state our belief in the communion of saints. In Latin, this is communio sanctorum, which can mean both holy things, when it suggests, for example, our share together in the sacramental life of the Church, especially the Eucharist, and holy people. In the New Testament, the saints, the holy ones of God, are simply all those who believe in and follow Christ in a particular place, a particular local church. Hence, St. Paul addresses his letters to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, or to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful to Christ Jesus, or to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. All the saints are the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the people of God. All the saints, in this sense, are all those who have been called into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church by baptism. As the church matures, we find a different sense of the word saint evolving, however, and it is perhaps this sense which we are more familiar with today. The saints are those in whom Christ-likeness, holiness, has been so visible, so demonstrable, that the church is able to declare with confidence that having passed through this life, they are fully alive in Christ, present to God in the joy of heaven. In the Western tradition in particular, that process by which the church so recognizes sanctity, holiness in a disciple of Christ, that she can declare them to be in heaven, declare them to be in heaven note, recognizing what God has done in this person's life. This process becomes codified and regulated, but it was not always so. The apostles, the teachers of the faith of the early church, and those who had lived lives of remarkable virtue were recognized as saints simply by virtue of the fact that their places of burial were venerated as holy places and their relics placed in or under our altars. For our early Christian brothers and sisters, it was fitting that the Eucharist, the Mass, should be celebrated, if at all possible, in close proximity to the mortal remains of the saints, that coming together, as in the creeds, of holy people with holy things. One category of Christians, above all others, were spontaneously and immediately acclaimed as saints. These were the martyrs, those who, in times of persecution, gave up their lives by witnessing to Christ, by their refusal to allow anything, even torture and the threat of death, to cause them to deny their Lord. There have been martyrs for Christ in every age, more perhaps in the 20th century than in any previous in the history of the Church, and there continue to be martyrs in this century, and in accordance with that ancient tradition, they too are acclaimed as saints of God. 
The church year, as we know, is marked with the feast days and commemorations of the saints. There are those who are celebrated in every part of the Christian world and those who are celebrated more locally in a particular nation or diocese. And we group the saints together according to the particular character or charism they have manifested. Martyrs, yes, but then confessors, those who have witnessed to the faith by their lives, but who have not suffered a martyr's death. Doctors of the church, that is to say, teachers and theologians, missionaries, pastors, those who have heroically served the poor. It is true to say, and probably inevitable, that a disproportionate number of those formerly declared to be saints are either ordained or lived the religious life, and there are certainly more men than women. But this is just where All Saints Day comes in and what makes it such a joyful feast day in the Christian year, worthy always of celebration with exuberance. Because on All Saints Day, we give thanks for and we celebrate all those countless women and men who are fully alive with the resurrection life, who rejoice in the life of heaven, but who have not been formally so declared by the authorities of the church. God alone knows who they are, but we can be confident that the number will be vast. Christian women and men, disciples of the Lord, who have lived lives of real but unnoticed holiness, or perhaps noticed by only a tiny number of people in this world, perhaps only one. All of them are gathered up into the great festival of all the saints. The Church of England, which emerged from the upheavals which shattered and remade the Western Church in the 16th and 17th centuries, never stopped formally commemorating and celebrating the saints. The prayer book not only has a collect and readings for the apostles and other biblical saints, but commemorates many more saints of the early church in its calendar. And that number has grown substantially in our modern liturgical books. What did happen as a consequence of the Reformation controversies, however, is that the Church of England ceased in her official rites and service books from asking for the prayers of the saints. Instead, the emphasis was wholly on the saints as examples of heroic and godly living. But the instinct of early Christians, which continues in the practice of the Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches, the instinct to ask for the prayers of the saints is surely the right one. For, and this is where we began, the saints are our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And as surely as we can ask our Christian friends in this world to pray for us, we can ask the saints, those friends of Christ who are closer to him than we who still follow the pilgrim way through this world. The saints, and this is a wonderful mystery, are not and were not perfect, at least not in their lives here on earth. They are and were real people and they display many of the less impressive human characteristics as well, of course, as each demonstrating that Christ-likeness, that heroic virtue, in such a way that the church may confidently declare them to be in heaven. And this is why the saints can truly be our companions in the faith, our companions in prayer, our companions on our own journey, pray God to heaven. In this time of pandemic, loneliness and isolation are terrible plagues, blighting the lives of so many and doing lasting damage. But in Christ, we are never alone because the saints are with us. In St. Paul's image, they are that great cloud of witnesses cheering us on our way. It is no accident then that on All Saints Day, the church invites us to read at mass the Beatitudes, part of our Lord's great sermon as recorded by St. Matthew which sets out for us the characteristics of holiness, the characteristics of the life of heaven. So let our last words be those of the collect in the Book of Common Prayer for this feast. And may Our Lady and all the saints, our family in heaven, 
pray for each one of you. O Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.